Garibaldi Lake is an icon, perhaps the best known alpine lake in British Columbia. Its turquoise waters, jagged peaks and tumbling glaciers lie at the heart of an alpine wonderland. But Garibaldi Lake is exceptional in a way perhaps not obvious at first. Most large lakes in mountain country lie deep in valley bottoms. Large lakes high in the mountains are rare. But that is exactly what Garibaldi Lake is. It sits among volcanoes at a higher elevation than any lake its size in British Columbia. It's also remarkably deep. So the question is, what created this exception of nature? A large and deep lake high in the Alpine. The answer? A remarkable story of fire and ice. Garibaldi Lake lies within Garibaldi Provincial Park, about an hour and a half by car north of the city of Vancouver, British Columbia. The lake's been a magnet for visitors since the 1920s, when the area became British Columbia's second provincial park. My first encounter with Garibaldi Lake was snow camping on top of Black Tusk in 1986 with my brother Tim, and that got us both hooked and began a series of explorations that have extended over 40 years. What sets Garibaldi apart from other alpine areas is its incredible fire and ice geology. Unique landforms created by the interaction of volcanic eruptions and ice age glaciers. Those fire and ice stories had been interpreted by pioneering geologist Dr. Bill Matthews. I met Bill Matthews early in my career as a geologist, and I was immediately drawn to his groundbreaking research on the Garibaldi Lake area. Today, I'm heading up to Garibaldi Lake to revisit the evidence that Bill used to figure out the lake's origins. My plan is to hike from the Rubble Creek Trailhead up the side of Rubble Creek Valley to Garibaldi Lake and visit three sites along the way. The barrier where the Rubble Creek Valley ends abruptly in a giant lava cliff, the popular campground on the shores of Garibaldi Lake, and Panorama Ridge high above the lake with its great view of the region. After two hours of steady uphill from the trailhead, I walk out to the edge of a yawning chasm. Ahead of me, the barrier, a massive wall of red and gray lava forms an unexpected end to the Rubble Creek Valley that stretches downstream to the trailhead where I started my hike. The barrier confounded Bill Matthews. What would cause a wall of lava to form an abrupt end to the Rubble Creek Valley? I keep Bill's question in mind as I continue up the trail. He knew the lava must have encountered some obstacle. But what could that be? An hour later, I arrive at the campground on the shores of Garibaldi Lake. The view from the lakeshore is dazzling. Granite peaks, crevassed glaciers, and turquoise waters that always astonish me. I poke along the shoreline of rock rubble, all of it a dark gray and brown. Bill Matthews mapped the entire campground area as an ancient lava flow. Another remarkable feature of Garibaldi Lake is hidden from view. It's exceptionally deep. At an astonishing 270 meters, it's deeper than most of the nearby ocean inlet of Howe Sound. I look across the lake to Panorama Ridge that rises from the lake's northern shore. That's where I'm heading. It has a great view and I can see people up there now. Several hours of hard hiking finally brings me to the top of Panorama Ridge. Spread out below me is the magnificent basin that cradles Garibaldi Lake. And far below is the lakeshore campground that I just left. The lake's eastern shore is a ragged mountain wall of granite and glacier. 
Off to the south and set back on the skyline rises giant Mount Garibaldi volcano. And closer to the shore, the odd flat-topped volcano, the table. On the south shore across from me are three more volcanoes. Mount Price is the largest. Less obvious is the smaller satellite cone near the shore and to the right, Clinker Peak Volcano. These volcanoes and a number of others make Garibaldi Park the most famous volcanic area in Canada. Further to the right of these volcanoes is the low western shore of the lake that descends from Clinker Peak to the lakefront campground and the barrier that I visited earlier on the hike. The low western shore is in striking contrast to the steep mountain slopes that surround the rest of the lake. Bill Matthews concluded that a lava flow from Clinker Peak Volcano had flowed all the way to the barrier near the end of the last ice age when vast glaciers that once covered the region were melting back. And that got him thinking about how Garibaldi Lake came to be. He measured the depth of the lake and determined that it was very deep, over 250 meters in spots and figured that an ancient valley drained by a creek must have existed where the lake and lava flow lie today. And when Clinker Peak volcano erupted, lava flowed down into the valley, forming a ridge across the valley over 300 meters high. The lavas blocked the stream, forming a lake, and the lake waters rose until the waters were able to spill around the low end of the lava flow, forming a remarkably large and deep lake. And so, Garibaldi Lake was born, an extraordinarily large, deep lake high in the mountains. I head back down the trail. I'm going to stop at the campground again, as I'm keen to take a look at the lava flow up close, right where the lava flow ends against the old valley, and the outlet stream spills out of the lake. I arrive back at the lake and it's busy with folks. This is where the lava flow ends, where the lava came to a halt. To my right is the steep blocky snout of the lava flow. To the left is the old valley that the lava flowed onto. A creek flows out of the lake. This is where the waters of Garibaldi Lake spill out around the end of the lava flow dam. The trail follows this edge of the lava flow around great blocks of lava and into the campground. I gaze out over the lake and see it for what it is, a drowned valley. Once this was a mountain valley drained by a stream. When the lava dammed the stream, the ponded waters drowned the valley, rising until they spilled around the end of the lava dam. I head inland through the campsite and come upon an open slope of giant blocks of lava rock. I try to imagine the lava flow beneath my feet. I'm standing on the lava flow's broken top, formed as the ancient lava flow crept forward. As its molten core flowed below, its surface cooled, and a rock crust formed that broke into blocks. Today, the broken lava blocks remind us of this landscape's dynamic past. Back on the shore, I look to the south. The three ancient volcanoes form the skyline. Mount Price, its satellite cone, and Clinker Peak. The entire eastern edge of the lava flow is visible, from its source at Clinker Peak all the way to the shore that I stand on now. I head off down the trail back to the barrier because there's one more puzzle that Bill Matthews had yet to solve. Why had the lava piled up in the valley to a thickness of over 300 meters? Why didn't the lava instead flow down and out the valley instead of abruptly ending at the giant barrier cliff? I pull out a photograph of the Garibaldi Lake area taken from high above the Rubble Creek Valley. Bill's fieldwork had revealed that the ancient lava flowed from Clinker Peak, spreading lava over a broad area. 
But an idea came to him. Clinker Peak had erupted at the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago, and thick glaciers remained in the valleys. When the lava flowed downhill, it collided with a glacier filling the Rubble Creek Valley, causing what must have been a mighty storm of hissing steam. The glacier wall chilled the lava flows to rock in a great vertical wall. Blocked by the glacier, lava piled up in the valley, creating the exceptionally large and deep Garibaldi Lake. Later, the glacier melted away, leaving a steep wall of lava at the barrier. Over the past 10,000 years, the lava wall has collapsed as landslides, creating the barrier that we know today. So there you have it, the remarkable fire and ice origins of Garibaldi Lake. Unique circumstances, a unique lake. Lava erupted into a high alpine valley, but collided with Ice Age glaciers. The lavas blocked stream flow, creating Garibaldi Lake. As exquisite as it is exceptional. Just remarkable.